There are three categories of NPIs. Personal NPIs, which include personal protective measures you can take every day, and personal protective measures reserved for pandemics. Community NPIs, which include social distancing measures designed to keep people who are sick away from others, and school closures and dismissals, and environmental NPIs, which include surface cleaning measures. MPIs are routinely recommended for prevention of respiratory virus transmission, such as seasonal influenza, include everyday personal protective measures. These are preventive actions we recommend all the time for influenza season. Stay home if you're sick, cover your cough, wash your hands. These MPIs are recommended during a pandemic, regardless of the severity level of the respiratory illness. Personal protective measures reserved for pandemics include voluntary home quarantine of household members who have been exposed to someone they live with who is sick. Now I'd like to talk through some examples of what community NPIs look like. These are practical measures that can help limit exposure by reducing face-to-face -face contact. All right, listen up. This is important. Settings. For schools, options include dividing students into smaller groups or in a severe pandemic, closing schools and using internet-based teleschooling to continue education. For adults, businesses can replace in-person meetings with video or telephone conferences and increase teleworking options. On a larger scale, communities and cities may need to modify, postpone, or cancel mass gatherings. For healthcare settings, this might include triaging patients differently, looking at how to increase telehealth services and delaying elective surgery. The implementation of environmental NPIs will require everyone to consistently clean, frequently touch surfaces and objects at home, at school, at work, and at large gatherings. Local communities will need to make decisions about what NPIs to implement and when, based on how severe transmission and disease is and what can be done locally. This will require flexibility and adaptations as disease progresses and new information becomes available. Some of these measures are better than none, but the maximum benefit occurs when the elements are layered upon each other. Some community level interventions that may be most effective in reducing the spread of a new virus, like school closures, are also the most likely to be associated with unwanted consequences and further disruptions. Secondary consequences of some of these measures might include missed work and loss of income. I understand this whole situation may seem overwhelming and that disruption to everyday life may be severe, but these are things that people need to start thinking about now. I had a conversation with my family over breakfast this morning, and I told my children that while I didn't think that they were at risk right now, we as a family need to be preparing for significant disruption of our lives. You should ask your children's school about their plans for school dismissals or school closures. Ask if there are plans for teleschool. I contacted my local school superintendent this morning with exactly those questions. You should think about what you would do for childcare if schools or daycares close. Is teleworking an option for you? Does your healthcare provider offer a telemedicine option? All of these questions can help you be better prepared for what might happen. CDC and other federal agencies have been practicing for this since the 2019 influenza pandemic. In the last two years, CDC has engaged in two pandemic influenza exercises that have required us to prepare for a severe pandemic. And just this past year, we had a...